Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 21 of the chapter Hello Elkanes and Hello Irenes. In the past few videos, I have been explaining stereochemical aspects to you so that we can understand the nucleophilic substitution reactions. And we studied about plain polarized light where I told you when you have the different rays of light in different direction, in different directions, when you pass it through a nickel prism, they all get oriented in one direction and in one plane. Such a light is known as plain polarized light, right? All the rays, they get oriented in one direction, in one plane, and such light is known as plain polarized light. I told you about that. Then I explained optical activity. That some solutions or the solutions of some compounds when you pass plain polarized light through them the plane of the polarized light gets rotated either to the right or to the left the molecules or the uh, compounds that rotate the plane of polarized light towards right are known as dextrorotatory and those that rotate the plane of polarized light towards the left are known as levorotatory so, and this is phenomenon is known as optical activity and there are compounds that show this optical activity. Then I told you that the molecules that have asymmetry in them that are not symmetrical, they are the ones that show, uh, though, that show such optical activity. The spatial arrangement and why is there asymmetry in the molecules? There is asymmetry in the molecules where the arrange the uh, the species which are attached to a central atom they are different, and if they are different, they would uh, the molecule would become asymmetrical. We know that carbon is tetravalent when all four bonds are all the species attached to all four bonds are different. Such a molecule would be asymmetrical and would show optical activity. That is, such a molecule would have two forms, one of which would be levorotatory and the other would be dextrorotatory. This uh, phenomenon where, where you, if you, I mean, having two forms, that is dextro, dextrorotatory and levorotatory is known, such uh, isomeric forms are known as enantiomers. Then I told you about chirality, that if you have molecules that are mirror images of each other, and if the mirror image cannot be superimposed on the original molecule, these two, like two hands, they are mirror images of each other. The uh, the thumb of this hand is in this direction but the thumb of this hand is in the other direction that is the left becomes right and the right becomes left you cannot superimpose mirror images of on each other such compounds or such enantiomers which do not have superimposable mirror images are said to be such compounds are said to be chiral and this phenomenon is this property is known as chirality so we studied about chirality we studied about enantiomers we studied about molecular asymmetry we studied about plane polarized light and we studied about optical activity and before we come to the sn1 and sn2 mechanisms or uh, to understand their stereochemical aspects we need to now understand three more uh, stereochemical properties that is inversion retention and racemization. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about inversion, retention and racemization. What is a racemic mixture? Now that we know that two enantiomers have molecules that have or isomers that rotate the plane of polarized light in two different directions by the same angle. That is one of the isomers is dextrorotatory, the other is levorotatory. Let us say that the dextrorotatory isomer rotates the plane of polarized light towards the right by 30 degrees. Then the levorotatory isomer would rotate the plane of polarized light towards the left by the same angle that is 30 degrees. So if I take a mixture of these two compounds, these two isomers, and I take a 50-50 mixture, that is the composition is both of them are equal composition. One mole of this, one mole of this is two moles, two molar solution. Half of it is dextrorotatory and half of the molecules are levorotatory. Now a solution of this mixture would be a racemic mixture. And what is this racemic mixture? Half of the molecules will rotate the plane of polarized towards light towards the right. The other half will rotate towards the left. So if one half is rotating it towards the right, the other half is going to rotate it back towards the left by the same angle. So what will happen? On the whole, there would be no uh, rotation of the plane of polarized light. 
so or it would not have optical activity such a mixture does not show optical activity not because it does not have optical activity but because the optical activity of the two um, compounds in the mixture are opposite and they cancel out each other so what is a racemic mixture a racemic mixture is a mixture containing two enantiomers in equal proportions both of them should be in equal proportions and they will have zero optical rotation why because both of them the optical rotation of each enantiomer would cancel out the optical rotation of the other one and how do you write it we write it by the racemic mixture is represented by plus minus i told you that plus tells us that a molecule is dextrorotatory and minus tells us that it is levorotatory so when you put a plus minus it means it's a racemic mixture having both dextrorotatory and levorotatory molecules in it and for a mol for the racemic mixture to be optically inactive both of them should be in 50% concentration so an example is plus minus butane to all i told you in the previous video and i showed you the structure also how butane to all has a chiral center and therefore it is optically active the next stereochemical aspect that we need to know is retention in a chemical reaction sometimes the retention of configuration takes place so you do understand what is retention retaining retaining is keeping it preserving it so the configuration of the molecule when or the when by talk of configuration i mean the arrangement of all the species around the central uh, chiral carbon if th they are retained they that that um, the direction uh, is not disturbed then we say that the reaction took place with the retention of configuration let me just explain read this out retention if the configuration is the pres preservation of sorry retention of configuration is the preservation of the integrity of the spatial arrangement of bonds to an asymmetric center during a chemical reaction now the language may be a little confusing a reaction took place this was a tetrahedral molecule right this is this is blue this is pink this is black and this is purple so there were four different species that were attached to the molecule the chemical reaction took place and we had another species that was present here now this species is supposed to replace the purple uh, what uh, pen it is supposed to replace the purple uh, species that is attached to the central carbon so what happens as a result of the reaction as the reaction takes place this was the reactant this species went away was lost and it the red pen took its place at the same position none of these angles was disturbed even this angle was not disturbed it's only it was replaced this component was replaced the purple component was replaced by another component so here the reaction has taken place but the configuration has been preserved since it has been preserved or retained such this is known as retention of configuration let me read this again you it will be easier for you to understand it now retention of configuration it is retained is the preservation of the integrity of spatial arrangement integrity of spatial arrangement means whatever the spatial arrangement was it remains the same it does not change when retention occurs so retention of configuration is the preservation of the integrity of spatial arrangement of the bonds to an asymmetric carbon my hand is this asymmetric carbon through which all the bonds are coming out so this is the chiral center and when a reaction takes place in such a way that one of the uh, one of these uh, species which is attached to the carbon is replaced by another one without disturbing any of the bonds we say retention has occurred so retention of configuration is a um, of an eight bonds arrangement of bonds to an asymmetric center during a chemical reaction or transformation when during a chemical reaction or a chemical transformation the integrity of the configuration is retained we say that retention of configuration has taken place also 
if you imagine the, the correlation for X, C, A, B, C, there is a molecule X, C, A, B, C being converted into Y, C, A, B, C. Now see, the carbon in both of these molecules is the chiral carbon or the stereochemical center. A, B, C are three species which do not change. Only X is being replaced by Y. That is what we did here. The purple letter say was X and the red pen was Y. So when X is being replaced by Y, X was present here, the X was removed and Y took its place. X was removed and Y took its place, A, B and C remained as they were without disturbing the configuration. Right? So this is known as the retention of configuration. So if the con... I'll, let me read it just one more time. The retention of configuration is the preservation of integrity of spatial arrangement of bonds to an asymmetric center during a chemical reaction or transformation. The correlation it, you can understand by X, C, A, B, C, Y, C, A, B, C, where X has been replaced by Y, having the same relative configuration. The relative configuration of all the species remains the same, only X has been replaced by Y. All other remain where they were during the reaction. And when would this happen? When would retention take place? When no bonds break during the chemical reaction. None of the bonds broke, just one species was removed and the other species took its place and the, the structure was not disturbed. An example of this here in a chemical reaction is this molecule. Take a look here. You have CH3, CH2 and there would be CH2 here. There would be CH here. So C is here, the hydrogen is here. So this is the chiral carbon. The chiral carbon has a methyl group here, uh, a methanol that is alcoholic group here CH2 OH so your main uh, compound this would be one carbon one carbon two carbon three carbon four so this is butane and the alcoholic group is attached here to the methyl to, to the methyl group the terminal methyl group so you, this is butanol and at the second carbon you have this substituent attached to it that is the methyl group which makes this carbon the chiral center so you have four different species this is CH3, this is CH2OH, this is CH2CH3 and this is H. Therefore, this carbon would be the chiral center. When it reacts with HCl, what happens? The entire molecule remains the same. The OH of the um, attached to this methyl group, the OH gets replaced by a Cl. So the bonds, do you notice this bond, these four bonds remained as they were. They were not disturbed yet the species was changed. So what has happened? The reaction has taken place with retention of configuration. The, the bonds of the asymmetric center, none of the bonds is broken. So during the reaction, no bond to the stereocenter was broken and therefore the configuration was retained. So example is minus is just convention we could have written plus also it could this is so this is levorotatory 2 methyl butane 1 all and you get when you replace the uh, chlorine to it you get uh, dextrorotatory it could be levorotatory also 1 chloro 2 methyl butane is the molecule that you get then you have understood what racemic mixture is you understood what retention is now let us understand what is retention, uh, what is inversion. Sometimes when the reaction takes place, retention may not occur. The compound that you get may be a mirror image. The configuration is changed and it is, it is a mirror image of the original compound. In this case, we say an inversion of the configuration has occurred. Do you remember when I was telling you about the nucleophilic substitution reaction? Um, if you do not remember what I'm talking of, I would encourage you to watch the previous videos where I explained the mechanism of SN2 uh, reaction. So when a nucleophilic substitution of a hyaloalkane takes place, for example, chlorine is leaving and the alcoholic group that is coming in 
is uh, the alcoholic group is taking the place of the chlorine the leaving group leaves and the chlorine comes from the opposite direction and therefore the bonds that were in one direction you find that the chlorine is attacking the alcoholic group is attacking from the opposite direction and the chlorine is leaving from one direction which leads to an inversion of the uh, configuration so all the bonds that were that appeared uh, the chlorine which was on the right side the alcoholic group comes to the left side and therefore the rest of the bonds they are pushed by the electrons of the attacking group and it leads to an inversion those bonds get pushed to the opposite direction so you get uh, the opposite that is the inverted or the other uh, form if one of them is dextrorotatory you would get the levorotatory form of the product so that happens in the case of inversion for example let us take this compound this is a compound here you have a chiral group here this is the chiral carbon a methyl group here hydrogen and this is the haloyl cane so you would say this is uh, you could call this 2 chlorobutane let us call this 2 chlorobutane so the second carbon is the chiral center if x is chlorine and le now let us say that the x the halogen uh, since we are talking of haloalkanes and halorenes, I'm taking the example of X as a halogen, but let it be any substituent. Make it react with a, a, a compound uh, where Y is going to substitute X. So if Y is going to substitute X, let us say in the first case, it, it results in the formation of the compound A. In this, what do we notice? C2H5 is where it is. H is where it is. It is moving away. You see the wedge and dash formula in the wedge. In the dashes, you see hydrogen and the wedge is methyl group. So C2H5, H and CH3, they retain their positions. The X and Y also are at the same angle. Only X has been replaced by Y. So we can say that in this reaction, what has happened? Retention of configuration has taken place. The other option would have been that on adding Y, what would happen? You would get a compound B. In B, what, what do you see? C2H5 is in the plane of the paper and it remains and the x is also in the plane so now c2h5 is where it was h now is now what was on the right is now towards the left ch3 was on the right it is now towards the left so what has happened an inversion has occurred and this is inversion of configuration so the x is replaced by y but it is accompanied by an inversion of the configuration so that was inversion and both of these are actually the same compound but they are they are the optical isomers or the enantiomers of each other they are stereo isomers and if i take a 50 percent mixture of both a and b compounds which are enantiomers i would get a racemic mixture so this reaction could have taken place either by a by forming a that is by retention or with inversion or you could get both and get a 50% mixture of both the enantiomers to get a racemic mixture. This process of getting a racemic mixture from the two enantiomers by using an equal quantity of both of them is known as racemization. Right? So A is formed as a result of retention, B is formed as a result of inversion, and A and B is a racemic mixture formed by the combination of A and B. And this 50% 50, 50, 50 in the ratio of 50 is to 50 is known as racemization. So now we have completed all the stereochemical aspects that you need to know in order to understand the SN1 and SN2 mechanisms. And that we will do in the next video. With this, I'll wrap up this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.